and uh, as we go along uh, before I introduce my guest let me share with you our inspirational word for the day it says the more you feed your mind with positive thoughts the more you can attract great things into your life the more you feed your mind with positive thoughts the more you can attract great things into your life and you know what i've been reflecting on this just a little bit because um sometimes worry and stress like it can really take away your today and you stop living all because you're really stressed out about today and the truth is these things that we stress about these things that we worry they don't even add a minute (laughs) to our tomorrow they don't add a minute to our future and so sometimes you kind of just have to decide with your mind that you're going to choose to be resilient with all the different things that you're facing also remembering that the power of life and death is in the tongue and so you know as you feed your mind your with positivity that's what your mouth is also going to confess that's going to be the conduit of that positivity in your life so a challenge to all of us today you know to fill your mind with positive thoughts what is it that you spend time consuming and how is it influencing the sort of person that you think about how is uh, that you are how is it influencing the sort of things that you think about and then how you perceive yourself and others around you so a challenge to you there the quote is anonymous but a powerful one nonetheless with that said, let me introduce my guest this uh, first um, segment. Um, with me, I have Dr. Simon Juguna, who's the Director of Mental Health at the Ministry of Health. Karibu to the show. I also have Naomi Anyango, who's a clinical psychologist and a medical social worker. Welcome to the show as well. It's good to have you both here. Thanks. So we want to talk about mental health awareness in Kenya and um of course, this is a topic that you know has really come to the forefront, uh, particularly this year. I think a lot more people stepping out to talk about the sort of issues that they've been facing. Now, on average, the mental the uh, mention of uh, mental health again um, has provoked images that I think we're now overcoming. It's not just about Amwenda um, Wazimu that we see on the street. We're understanding mental health affects you, me. Uh, it's someone could be very well dressed in a very expensive suit and still be struggling with with mental health issues. And so in many ways, Daktari, there isn't a face of mental health issues, is there? Yeah, it's true. Thank you, Joyce, for having us uh, in the studio. It's true, as you have said, that uh, mental health is a key ingredient in our day-to-day life. Uh, mainly when you talk about mental health, we are not even talking about mental illness. We're mm-hmm. just uh, really looking at the real health of someone that they're able to cope with everyday life actualize their abilities and become productive in the society Mm -hmm. so on every day basis when you are struggling with one aspect of your self that you are not able to actualize yourself or become productive Mm -hmm. you're actually talking about your mental health or your mental well-being so we are moving the conversation from as you have mentioned the mental illness to the mental well-being of all of us right and this makes us very productive and that's why the upcoming conference which is starting tomorrow is looking at mental health as a public health and a social economic agenda okay mm-hmm. and you're going to be telling us a bit more about this conference in just a bit but um naomi mm-hmm. um you work as a clinical psychologist mm-hmm. what would be some of the things that you would point out as um maybe contributing factors to i don't know if you would say it's a rise in mental health issues in kenya or if it's just that more people are stepping out to talk about it but what would you say are some of the contributing factors to what we're seeing today I think most people don't um, understand uh, when they get mentally sick. I think most people, when they think about mental illness, they think about that man or woman on the street, maybe who's walking naked, carrying a sack and talking to themselves. People don't see um, stress, for example, as a mental illness when Mm. the levels are are elevated. Um, People don't see that work issues or family issues can bring about stresses that can make you not function in society. So generally, I think people may not fully understand what mental illness is because we just have this idea that it has to be that person who's talking to themselves. And then of late, there's been these talks about suicide and depression and maybe anxiety. And then we forget things um, like, for example, eating disorders. We, we, We forget things like gambling, 
which is an addiction and then we don't see that as a mental illness mm -hmm. and we also forget most of the time to take care of ourselves right we are always taking care of others but then we forget about our own self care mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and you know what the reality is as we as we bring this discussion you know to to the situations that we are facing today because we've discussed mental health a lot on this show yeah. but i want to reflect specifically on what we've been seeing this week mm -hmm. right so a, a major mm -hmm in the army, someone who took an oath to preserve and protect the lives of Kenyans, then went and took, allegedly took the lives of his own wife and kids. Mm -hmm. And the youngest was, was it four years old? Yeah. I, I mean, not, to, I, obviously I'm not a psychologist, but you know, to the rest of us, that sounds crazy. That sounds like something is wrong mm -hmm. somewhere. Again, there's another situation of a man who then hacked his 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 wife or estranged uh, partner as well. And so when we're seeing all of these different forms of violence, even domestic violence, you know, against spouses, between spouses, mm -hmm. does that sort of ring any bells or echo to you any sort of mental health issues or? Yeah, it does. Um, um for you to be mentally fit, first of all, it says that you're able to cope with the stresses that are around you. That means that you'll go to work, it will be stressful, but you'll still manage to pull through. And uh, whatever issues you may have, you're not going to blame people, for example. But when it reaches a point that you're not able to cope, you're not able to work the way you used to, you're not able to relate to your colleagues the way you used to, then that should be a, a bell. Yeah. Yeah. And and people need to take note. But I can give an example with the major I saw in the papers there was a time he went, stood in the rain and then was just looking at his phone and his colleagues didn't see that as something that warranted some attention. Mm. But that is how it starts. Okay. Something small and eventually grows big and mm -hmm. it explodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe I can add something on yes, that please. conversation. Mm. Uh we need to look broadly in terms of what we call the social determinants mm -hmm. when you talk about mental health. And some of the uh, social determinants which have been identified are issues to do with, you know, our day-to-day -day living. You know, mm. issues about uh, economic uh, uh, stress we are going through, issues about uh, poverty, issues about our socio-cultural uh, beliefs and practices. Sometimes they may have a role in terms of people's mental health. Mm -hmm. So when we are talking about mental health, we, we need to move from looking at the health aspect before the health is affected. What is happening? What are those determinants which makes you remain healthy? Mm. I'll give a good example. Uh, people when they are going through traffic jam, they start getting agitated. Mm -hmm. That is an, as an aspect of their mental health. Mm -hmm. If the transport system was so efficient and so effective, mm -hmm. you'd find people getting to the offices more relaxed. Mm -hmm. If their working hours or their working schedules are well balanced, you'd have people getting better he mental health. Right. Mm -hmm. If people are not struggling with unemployment or they have social amenities where they can go and enjoy themselves, you know, to reduce the stress. Uh, so healthy lifestyles, like people able to walk, green parks, mm -hmm. uh, social amenities for our children on those spaces. We call them mental healthy friendly spaces. Mm -hmm. It's very important. So there's the issues of the social determinant. Mm -hmm. But there's always a caveat on the issues of violence and mental health. Mental illness is not synonymous with violence. Yeah. So there are other factors which determine issues we are seeing in our society to do with violence and they may not be related with mental health. Okay. Uh, we may even be developing a culture. There are social issues, and sociologists will tell you when you look at issues of violence within society, that there are deep issues, social issues that determine violence. Sometimes mm. when we normalize violence. Mm. People who, uh, studies have shown that people with mental illness are not violent. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Dr. I wanted to take a break right now, but when we come back, I'm going to be back here with Dr. and Naomi as we continue discussing mental health awareness in Kenya. I have some questions about, you know, what the government is doing. It would be good for Kenyans to hear that. You know, it's the first time we've had the Ministry of Health here talking about it. Mm -hmm. So what is the government doing? Um, I also want to hear about this conference that is happening this week and a little more about these mental health friendly spaces and how we can be more proactive active in ensuring that the right environment exists for all of us double two triple nine once again is the sms line and you can also reach us on social media at switch tv kenya on facebook i'll be back after this break
All right, everybody, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. Thank you once again for your company. Of course, you can keep sending in your feedback and your comments to double two triple nine. That's our SMS line. Once again, absolutely free for you to SMS in. Um, and I do appreciate you. Caroline tuned in from Juja. You say you're loving the discussion about mental health uh, awareness. Thank you for that. Um, uh, thank you as well, Iman, James, for your feedback and your comments. Now, just before we went on break, Dr. Tari had started talking about mental health, like friendly spaces, mm -hmm. sort of in, in business, they would call them, I guess, enabling environments for people yeah. to have yeah. um, good, proper mental health. Mm -hmm. And it makes me think about children, right? So right now we're in the phase where KCP e KCPE examination results have just come out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the government has promised everybody will get a place in school, but there's still a lot of pressure to go to the national school, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and uh, recently, there was a story about a six-year-old who threw himself from a balcony. And so you wonder, um, at what age should we begin involving children in the mental health discussion? Is it prevalent even to see mental health issues arise among children, Naomi? Yeah, we have um, children also uh, experience mental illnesses. And uh, actually most of the time um, they go undiagnosed and then they become worse in adulthood. But uh, they definitely do get affected. Yeah. And it also boils down to um, the caregivers are they able to notice there's something off with this child? And mm -hmm. when they notice that, how do they handle it? Do they seek help or assistance or do they do uh, things the way they understand best? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And um, uh, also to you, Naomi, mm -hmm. apparently psychologists are now linking increased cases of suicide or mental health issues to tough economic times and i guess this is going back to that stress factor that you yeah. were talking about yeah sure. um you know in your practice though to prevent is is one of uh, what am I, i'm trying to ask that you know as we're trying to prevent mental health issues escalating into things like suicide mm -hmm. are you finding more and more kenyans beginning to open up and actually seek therapy seek counseling to talk about the issues that they're facing because let's not lie life is tough in this country right now yeah sure um i, I would say that maybe 10 years back uh people were not opening up so much but right now even if it's slow but people are talking and um, with the media also helping sensitizing people um, creating awareness about mental illnesses then people are becoming more and more aware and they are knowing that these places we can seek help and mm -hmm. they're coming so it will be nice if uh, more and more people would come out instead of um, keeping to themselves but also they do keep to themselves because of stigma Mm. No one wants to be labeled that they're mentally ill mm -hmm. because what comes with it is a tag. I'll give an example of Mathari Hospital. So you do something and then people will say you're a Mathari case. Mm. And that's labeling and it's bad. And yeah. so when people think about that, they prefer to just keep to themselves, which is not the best. Yeah. Okay. So we need to destigmatize the whole right. issue of mental illness. Speaking of Mathari Hospital, mm. um, uh, again, here, I think there's been an associate when we think about government involvement with sort of providing any sort of space or treatment facility for mental health, we mm -hmm. immediately think Madari. Yeah. But then again, our perception of Madari Hospital is very different, I think, from the way we describe mental health today. And so coming to you, Dr. Tari, um, it's interesting because your, your role is actually director of mental health at mm -hmm. the Ministry of Health. Um, when did the ministry establish that division and what was its initial aim? Yeah, so thank you. The division of mental health actually is established under the law. This is provided in the Mental Health Act and the act came into being in 1989. Not that the Ministry of Health was not addressing issues of mental health before. Mm. There were still uh, units and sections dealing with mental health but officially being recognized by law came into being in 1989. And the law provides for the Office of the Director of Mental Health and stipulate the functions and as well as they provide for the Kenya Board of Mental Health, okay. which the director is a secretary. And the whole purpose of the divisions is to, as you know, currently with the uh, constitutional dispensation is to formulate the policy. Yeah. And that's why we have the Kenya Mental Health Policy. 
is to coordinate mental health activities within the country. Right. Is to provide uh, uh, guidelines and you know ensure standards in right. terms of mental health provisions, and also you know do capacity building and technical assistance to the county as well as monitoring and evaluation. Okay, so just, just to, uh, uh, unfortunately, I have to cut you short because our time is running out, but uh, you've mentioned the Kenya Mental Health Policy, which is this document right mm -hmm. here, yes. um, and this is from 2015 to 2030. So I imagine there's certainly been an evolution even in the way that the government itself has perceived mm -hmm. mental health issues mm -hmm. from not just being about, you know, those who um have uh, completely struggling with men I, I guess at the far end of the spectrum of mental health issues but even to what we're now talking about today this faceless form of mental health issues and it says here that some of the roles and responsibilities of the national government which you're already uh, touching on are developing policy and legislation standard setting and regulation um you know, as far as mental health issues are concerned, even to the county governments. Mm -hmm. So very briefly, could you walk us through what are some of these policies that you're looking to implement? Yeah, basically some of the key uh, policies trying to mainstream mental health into the other sectors. As, as you mentioned, we need to mainstream mental health in the schools. Mm -hmm. We need to mainstream mental health in the workplaces so that the workplaces ensure that there are those mental health friendly spaces and even you know the way the work is structured and delivered uh, always cater for that the same thing with the school as you have mentioned how are children because mental illness tend to affect children or the factors which lead to mental illness mainly arises as the child go through the growth and development of the child okay so our schools and our colleges are key and we need to move the mental health conversation into the colleges so are these policies and directives that you're already trying to implement and establish within these institutions? Yes, it's true. They are already distributed. We are working with those sectors. You look within the police service, they have a council, a whole department of counseling service. You look mm -hmm. at the public service, they hold a whole department of counseling service. Mm -hmm. The social services are also working with them, trying to ensure the social protection of people with mental illness. Mm -hmm. The schools, the whole school health program, really put emphasis on mental health. Yeah. And then as you move down to even the communities. Yeah. So we really need to move mental health from hospitals to the community, to the workplaces. Yeah, to, and that's a good point. And in yeah. fact, actually, one of our viewers, Jane, has brought it up because yeah. there's then the question of prevention is always better than cure, right? Yeah. So we're having tough economic times. There's yeah. all sorts of interrelational issues and relationships between spouses and whatnot. Um, even at the county, and a lot of those cases we're hearing are Oko Mashinani, right, in mm -hmm. county uh, areas. And so when you're saying to move this discussion from hospitals um, and now into the communities, Jane is asking, where can one go for free counseling? And I'd like to hear your opinions as far as that is concerned, given the tough economic times we're facing, should that be something that is freely provided to mm -hmm. Kenyan citizens? Yeah, as, as we build up in terms of uh, infrastructure, first I would like to mention the treatment gap has been huge. Yeah. It has been seen in most of our countries, like what we consider as a low and middle income country, the treatment gap has been 80%. Mm -hmm. wow. That 80% of the people have not been able to access services. Mm -hmm. But as Jane has asked, we need to move these that we get 50% of our Kenyans are able to access services. Mm -hmm. And the whole agenda of universal health coverage mm -hmm. and, and our policy implementation will be very key. Mm -hmm. Because what we are doing is, uh, before we train more psychologists and counselors, we are training the normal nurses, the clinical officers and social workers, mm -hmm. basic counseling skills yeah. okay. at the health centers right. so that they go there to get their services. They will not only get services for their illness, but also they can be able to provide basic care. Mm -hmm. But that is not enough. We need to look at the future. We have enough psychologists, enough counselors, mm -hmm. all across in the workplaces, in the schools, in the community. Okay. And, and um, also maybe just to briefly. add on that, um, there's the issue of training the CHVs because the, the uh, community health volunteers because they work in communities and it's easy for them to identify people that may be going through uh, uh, some challenges here and there mentally mm -hmm. or psychologically. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even um, among our police force too. Yeah. I mean, this is a whole major, mm. you know, that uh, committed these crimes. Uh, and so certainly a lot to discuss there. My time is up uh, and I do need to release you guys now. But mm -hmm. before I let you go, do tell me about this conference very briefly that you said is taking place this week. Mm. Yeah, so thank you, Joyce. Uh, we, the Ministry of Health, working with all the stakeholders within the space of mental health, we are holding the first uh, 
Kenya Mental Health Conference. It's starting tomorrow, uh, 21st, and going up to Friday. This will be at KICC. And it will be very exciting uh, because we will be having discussion around what the policy is saying and how we need to move to the next level in terms right. of our mental health in this country. Okay. We will also be launching uh, what we call a quality rights uh, mental health initiative. Mm -hmm. This is a concept where we want to bring the issues of quality of care and the human rights standard in the way we address issues to do with persons with mental health condition. Uh, persons with psychosocial, intellectual, and cognitive disability. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you both so much for your time. Yeah, we look forward you. to hearing some of the action points and recommendations mm -hmm. that will be coming out from this conference, mm -hmm. uh, even as we continue to um, just look to ways at which we can actually address this issue and ensure as many Kenyans find the help that they do need. So, Asante Nitana mm -hmm. for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, guys. That's going to be it for that discussion. We're going to take a break now as we get ready for our next one, which is going to be on another huge issue which is skin bleaching um, in this country and in many other countries in the world we still have grapples with our identity and the color of our skin and what is beautiful and what is not we want to talk about that when we come back from this break stay tuned this is full circle with Joyce <laughs> 